In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can go from these individual Figma screens to this responsive layout using Webflow. First, we'll take a look at all of the responsive elements that you guys need to know to be able to create something like this. We're gonna go into Figma first, take a look at all the screens, and then we're gonna dive directly into Webflow where I'm gonna show you guys what you need to do in order to achieve a responsive layout like this. So in Figma here, this is the base desktop design, and I'm designing on a 1440 pixel breakpoint here, but you can go even smaller or even larger, but this is the one that I'm doing here. So all that we're doing when we're going up into the desktop large breakpoint, so that's gonna be anything above 1440, is that we're just simply expanding the breakpoint. None of the content is actually going to be expanding or scaling, it's just going to be simply static and the breakpoint itself is going to be larger. Now there's a couple of benefits of this and we'll get into them later on, but for now, let's take a look at the tablet version. So the tablet version, we're doing a couple of things. So number one, we're gonna keep the image on the same width as the content itself, so it's within that same grid. And then we're also shrinking the vertical size of this image just by a little bit, because if we kept it to be be the same exact size, well then it would look a little bit weird in terms of the fold. So this isn't necessarily the best way that we can do that. So as we go back into mobile, we're gonna start to reduce our typography sizes, our elements, our buttons, things like that, tags as well. So everything is gonna start to shift from tablet all the way down to mobile in terms of typography, scaling, sizing, things like that. But the more important things are gonna start to happen on mobile horizontal. And I don't feature that here, but that is what's gonna start happening here. So as we go into tablet as well, well, in the Webflow version, we also have the menu here happening or starting directly in the tablet version, but in the design here, it's only on the mobile. So keep that in mind, but we can cover that later on in the video as well. So lastly, one thing that we need to note here is that the email signup, so this very simple e email signup here, shifts from being aligned horizontally to being aligned vertically. And this allows us to expand the text and the element to the full width of our container, rather than having it be side by side, being super constrained as we can see, for example, something like this, right? That doesn't necessarily look the best. And the best case scenario that we can do in mobile would be something like this where it's vertically aligned. So the next thing is gonna be the menu element here. And this is just a very simple menu that I've designed and I think it looks fine for this example. So keep that in mind, it's supposed to scale the full length of the page and we'll get into that later on. So let's, without further ado, all this later on stuff, let's actually dive into Webflow, show you guys how we can transform this design into something more responsive that shifts and scales as long as we have our breakpoints moving. So now in Webflow, here is the full design that we have already built and as you can tell, it's an exact copy and exact replica of what we have in Figma. And this is hand-built. Nothing is using the Figma to Webflow plugin or anything like that. It's all hand-built. So how do we do this? Well, there's a couple of different things to take into consideration. So the first one is going to be, we'll break this into the nav bar and then the actual hero section because those are the main two components, right? We've got the nav and then we've got this. So the hero section itself or the hero header, if I go into the designer here, we'll see that it has a few different components. And this is going to be super, super critical for you guys to be able to scale your websites up and down. Now, this is using something called the client first framework. And what this allows us to do, it allows us to have a global class for all of our padding, all of our margin, and also for the max container width. Now, max container width, is something that is important and we also showcase it inside of the Figma design itself. So we see that here we have the container and the container is 1264, but we can also do 1280 if we wanted to do that. So maybe, okay, whatever. We'll leave it as is for this video, but we can also do 1280 for this scenario. So we have the container here. It's 80 pixels between the content and the image. And then we have padding for the entire section. Now we could split this into horizontal padding and then the vertical padding, right? But in this case, because it's Figma, we can simply do one for everything. So we have 88 pixels for horizontal and 104 pixels for the top. Now, one thing to keep in mind for this video, for this tutorial is gonna be the responsive sizing of REMs. REMs are gonna be critical for this tutorial. So if you don't know what REMs are, REM stands for the root element font size. So it's a base font size that a website might have. In most cases, it's going to be 16 pixels. So keep that in mind because that is what we're going to be working with this entire project. So I say that because if we take 88 and divide it by 16, which is going to give us our REM number, so we can go ahead and do that. So we can do 88 divided by 16 and we can see that it's going to give us 5.5. Now that number is what we put into Webflow to give us that standard responsive REM unit. So that is going to be our are padding. And that is the exact same way that we're building it inside of Webflow. So we have the max container. So in this case, it's 80 REM. But if we go ahead and multiply that by 16 pixels, just by doing that, we can see that it's 1280 pixels, which is going to be our max container width. And what this is going to allow us to do is that if we go ahead and move this anyway up, we'll see that the absolute max size that anything inside of this max width container is going to be is going to be those 1280 pixels. You can make this larger or smaller, but 1280 is pretty standard in this case. Now you can see that it can get smaller, 
but it cannot get any larger. And this is good because when you start scaling up your size, you don't want to use a VW for something like this because your content is simply just going to scale and scale and scale and scale, and it's not going to be responsive properly. So now that we have the max width set up, we can also take a look at the padding global here, which is going to be 5.5 REM. So that's going to give us that padding that we need anytime that this shrinks all the way down. You see that we have that padding going on there and that's going to protect us within the side margins there. Then we have just the name of the section in general. In this case, it's going to be our hero header section, but you can call this absolutely anything you want. So in the nav bar, there's a couple of different things to take into consideration. We still have the max width container going on. We have, but it's called a different name, but we can also call it that. We have the padding on the top in this case, which in this case is going to be one REM. So if we go back to our definition, it's going to be one times the 16 root element. Now, this is all very technical, unnecessary stuff, but it's super important to learn because it's going to help you build websites so much, so much faster. So one REM for the top nav there. We've got our logo. We've got our one link there and then our menu. This menu is going to be what is going to transform into the three lined icon here that that kind of tapping menu, but we don't need that for now. So we have two different things going on here. Personally, I like to put two different link menus, one inside of the actual menu that we can see and open here just like that. Now ignore that for a second, but that is one of the menus that I like to use. And then I like to use this second nav link wrapper menu here. So this is going to be our wrapper for all of our links. And because it's in a separate div, we don't need to do absolute or anything like that. It's just a simple relative link wrapper. So here it it's relative and it's just centered in the middle of both of these two elements here. So as we start going down into tablet mode here, we can see that a couple things are now starting to happen, right? So the primary way that this section is being built is with this grid here, this hero header grid. If I go into edit grid, we'll see that it's just a very simple one FR, one FR column with around 80 pixels of space, but I've transformed it into REMs in this case. So if we do five times 16, pixels, we'll see that it'll give us 80 pixels, but we want to transform it into REMs so that it can be easily scalable up and down. So here we have the tablet version and we can notice that not much has changed and the content section itself, we have the H1 and the body paragraph, a very simple signup form, and then the tag as well. All of the elements in here are built using REMs so that they can be scaled up and down depending on that root element. Again, super, super critical. In this case here, I've built this grid using a min max auto and 0.75 FR, which is going to allow the image to be a little bit smaller than it would be on desktop. So now as we start getting down to our horizontal mobile, we can see that we don't really need to worry about how things are scaling just because we've set up the system in the tablet version so well that it kind of just, it kind of just does it for itself, right? Now, obviously we have a couple things going on here. For example, the buttons here, the text just got dramatically smaller, but the layout itself is starting to be a lot more responsive. We don't need to do a lot, all of this manual work where we're worrying about the individual breakpoints. So what's happening here, right? So the H1 here, if we go into the HTML tag, so that's going to be like the base, base, base element that we can edit. We'll see that we go from 3.5 REMs so if you want to find what that is, we just multiply it by 16 pixels, just like that. So we see that it's 56 for the H1. So we go from 56 pixels all the way down to 2.5 REM. So 2.5 REM is going to be a significantly smaller text size, but it's going to allow the content to be able to be read a lot more in this smaller breakpoint. And it's also going to allow it to breathe. One thing I just noticed here is that the email input should be centered just like that. When we're in horizontal mobile, we're kind of preparing it for the actual mobile. And this is kind of just the step before that. So just prepare it for the actual mobile design. We go ahead into mobile and we see that everything is already standard just how we want it, just because we already did it when we were in horizontal. So we, we see that it's pretty much the same thing, except for the image in this case is a little bit bigger. We went back into the element grid here and we reset it to be one FR instead of the 0.5 FR that we did before. Now, other than the layout and the typography, another really important thing that's been going on this whole time is the spacing between all the elements. The spacing is going to be one of the things that's going to make or break your design. Now, within the grid, within the two elements here, it's been consistently scaling down from desktop. So five REMs in terms of this horizontal column. And then we go down into four REMs because now we're in that vertical column grid. Same thing down, three REMs. So we can see that it's starting to get a little bit smaller and smaller. But one thing that's also happening in terms of the margin here, now I'm using these div blocks to create a little bit of margin. It's similarly, how we would do in Figma with auto layout. Here we see that we have a simple spacing between these two elements here. In Webflow, we can do that with div block. So we can do margin top and have four REMs. So four times 16 is going to be our spacing for this two elements. Now, when we take that and we start putting it into the lower breakpoints, we can either one, keep the same spacing 
or when we get into the mobile breakpoints, we start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So in this case, it's three, and that goes all the way down to 1.5 REM. So again, 1.5 times 16. So in this case, it's gonna be 20 pixels of space between this paragraph here and then the email signup form. Now, this is a bit more advanced of a tutorial than I usually do. So if you guys want me to go into a little bit more in depth into everything that makes up this responsive layout, do let me know in the comments below. If you guys want me to go even more advanced, then that's also a possibility, let me know. So if you guys have any questions about what I did here, if you guys aren't really sure about anything, maybe about even the whole process, just from the top all, all the way down to the bottom. Let me know in the comments down below. I forgot to cover the, the menu here, but you know, pretty simple. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas or any comments or any, anything you want to talk about, let me know down below and I'll be sure to get to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.